Howdy! Time for another Jimmy Downard video on a creation evolution issue, and this one is one of the classic pieces of dumb that you get all the time, especially on the internet. Why are there still apes if human beings evolved from apes? This one reveals an awful lot more about the person saying it than any of the understanding of evolutionary theory. It involves an inability to conceptualize what branching speciation involves in lineages, and it involves how they don't even keep up with their own side stuff because the mainstream, if there are such things as mainstream higher level creationists, Answers in Genesis and the like, they will tell these people, don't use this argument, it's a bad one, it's a terrible analogy. What's fascinating about it is that nobody would think this way if they were talking about a regular genealogy. If you have your... Um, Boy, it's hard to do these things in video where I've, all my emotions are backwards because I'm seeing myself in the reflection. Anyway, um, when you have a branching genealogy where two forms diverge from one another, bingo down here. Absolutely nothing in evolutionary theory says that this form has to make this form go away. That if you've got um, apes evolving from common ancestry, hominids, us, and chimpanzees, and gorillas, and orangutans, and all the rest. That their common ancestor is none of those. It's a generic primate-like animal that eventually forms a lineage that ends up being, in their own separate lines, all these separate forms. So, nothing in evolutionary theory means that in order for our lineage to exist, that all the apes have to turn into us too, just as their existence doesn't mean that the lineage leading to gorillas means they should all be turning, uh, that we should be turning into them in order to prove that. Um, if you think of it in a normal genealogy sense, when you're born, does that mean all your cousins drop dead? Or that your cousins can't be related to you because they all haven't turned into you too? If you tried to use that in a normal family relationship, you'd realize how stupid it is. And yet, the anti-evolutionist literally can't extend that to a family lineage that extends beyond their own species breeding population. Remember, they never look at the species thing. We know that species are kind of squishy. Um, ring species are the classic example, the herring gull, where um, you have a herring gull line that rings the entire Arctic Ocean. And the ones in um, Europe will interbreed with their neighbors, and the ones with those will interbreed with their neighbors in Siberia, and those all the way around to the ones at um, uh, in Siberia across from Alaska. But if you try to interbreed the ones in Alaska with Siberia, they won't interbreed. And that's because their variation within that ring has grown so great that if the ones in between, say over in um, uh, Russia or uh, uh, Europe, disappeared, uh, you'd now have two separate species because they wouldn't be able to interbreed with one another. And that's the definition of species from that uh, geographic isolation um, hybridization issue. Now, close cousins can still occasionally hybridize, and you can still find that in the mule cases, and you can make ligers uh, and the like. You're seeing that process of speciation on the fly. But when we're talking about forming hominids from primates from way back, or gorillas from those same common ancestors way back, the time frame involved and the number of steps in between is way more than you're seeing in just the steps that we can see in those um, uh, ring species. And so what the anti-evolutionist snags up on is being able to look at each one of those sub-steps and then layering them out step by step by step by step by step to realize how that forms a long relationship. Uh, the best analogy I've ever seen on the thing is, is you can see a graphic where there's a, a paragraph that starts out all blue ink and ends up all red ink at the end. And it's done by very tiny gradations as it becomes less blue and more red, letter by letter by letter by letter. There is no point at which there is a word that's half blue and half red. There is no abrupt jump from blue to red. It's all super gradual. And when you think about that and simply apply that to what you're seeing in the speciation record, in the fossil record, that's exactly what you're seeing. So. Um, the next time somebody trots out the why is there ape things, not only do you should you now know that they're coming from a weird little niche, that there's going to be a whole bunch of baggage that they won't understand in their heads, and you might want to direct your questioning 
to try to demonstrate just what, if any, material they'd ever read on this subject, and if they'd even kept up with the creationist literature, where they have been told, had they read that, that that's not a good argument to use, get over it, move on. Thus, apes still exist, because everybody has their own independent lineage. Thank you very much for this little quickie video.